Hey guys, it is January 3rd again, and I am here in my hotel here in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, we made it here about 30 minutes ago, and um, just getting ready for my procedure tomorrow. But <clears throat> like I told you guys, I was going to, if any of you guys watched the uh, video I made just a little bit ago, the update um, with us coming down here, then... Uh, you know what the video is going to be today but for those of you who didn't watch it uh, today's video I'm going to talk about cirrhosis and um, <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of stuff to go over here um, and I'm sure I'm not going to hit every single point um, you know just just a list of things that uh, you know that I've researched <clears throat> especially things that I've dealt with a lot of this is just knowledge that I've gained through uh, all the time that I've spent dealing with this talking with doctors and um, you know it, when speaking with doctors I mean you really learn a lot especially when you're dealing with this on you know a daily basis and uh, you know if you want to know more about your condition you know I mean like I said before I mean the, the power is in the palm of your hand you can look anything up that you want I really suggest that you do your own research um, you know just don't take the doctor's every single word and uh, take a look at the stuff yourself and um, you know get a good idea because they're not going to be able to tell you every single thing uh, you know they've, they've only gotten a lot of time that they're going to spend with you and they're not going to go through every single detail and I'm not going to be able to go through every single detail in this video but I'm going to do my best so <clears throat> cirrhosis um, 2% of adults in America end up with cirrhosis and um, what cirrhosis is, is cirrhosis is fibrosis and scarring of the liver. So basically when your liver is trying to repair itself, every time it does it, it creates a little bit of scar tissue as it continues to do that over and over time, then the scarring gets so bad that you end up with cirrhosis and it's basically a hardening shrinking of the liver uh, with, with, with a bunch of scarring all over it um, so what are the causes of cirrhosis well of course uh, consumption of alcohol is uh, uh, one of the main contributors to, to developing cirrhosis uh, certain medications can cause it genetics uh, diet, especially diets that are high in sugar, can cause um, cirrhosis. Uh, fatty liver disease, uh, which is kind of like a precursor to cirrhosis. Um, and then you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease uh, that has nothing to do with alcohol at all. Um, but both of those can still lead to uh, cirrhosis if not taken care of or addressed. Um, hepatitis uh, C or B can cause um, cirrhosis as well. Um, uh, swelling or scarring of the gallbladder ducts can cause cirrhosis. Um, that is called primary sclerosing cholangitis is what that is called. Um, iron buildup in the body, which is called hemochromatosis. And if I'm pronouncing these wrong, uh, wrong I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I just figured I'd look up the names for it. Uh, Wilson's disease can cause it, and uh, autoimmune hepatitis can cause uh, cirrhosis as well. Um, how do they determine cirrhosis? Well, um, the one thing about cirrhosis is there's really no signs or symptoms. It's, it's, it's a silent killer and uh, there's not a lot leading up to it until it gets too bad. Unless you're going to your doctor every year and having your physical done and all your blood work done. Um, that is something if I can't give you enough advice in the world, uh, you know, all my life. I mean, I didn't have my first physical done. Um, I've had one before when I was like 18, 19 years old. Um, I was actually going to go into the military. It didn't work out. Long story. But um, anyway, uh, I think that's the last real physical I had done. And <clears throat> I didn't have another one done until just last year. Uh, now the, you know, the year before that, I'd gone through all this stuff. And they checked a lot of things. I mean, they, my body was basically, you know, ran through every test they could do which I would say is like a super duper uh, physical, but going to get your annual physical every year <clears throat> could potentially really save your life. And um, 
I would highly suggest that you do it. I know it's scary. It's something that you don't want to do. I never wanted to do it. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I just never did. And people would be like, when, when was your last physical? I haven't had one. And they would just look at me like I had three eyes. But <clears throat> the thing was, is I was afraid. I didn't want to hear what the doctors had to say. Um, and I definitely didn't want somebody to tell me I had to stop drinking because that was the last thing I wanted to do. Um, but anyway, back to how they determine uh, uh, cirrhosis. Uh, they can do a sonogram, uh, MRI, uh, CAT scans can um, uh, determine. Uh, they can do a liver density test, uh, blood tests, endoscopy. Um, if you have internal bleeding, that's a huge indicator that you probably have cirrhosis, which there's a whole slew of things again. We'll get into that later. Uh, low platelets, uh, which is another thing we'll get into in a little bit, but that's you know due to the spleen. Um, they can do screening for hepatitis, and uh, they can uh, check your liver enzymes. And then last but not least, they can do a biopsy on your liver as well to determine it. Um, <clears throat> What it's like and a lot of this stuff uh i mean i can just you know I, I deal with this on a daily basis excuse me one of the largest things that i deal with um i deal with a lot of ga gastrointestinal problems um uh I, I, I'm, I constant stomach aches all the time um there i i suffer from nausea all day long uh there's a lot of times I'm filming these videos and I have to stop because the nausea just gets so bad and I have to go back and start all over again in the beginning. An hour later, I'll have to take my medication and wait. Um, I'm on a Zofran or on a Destrin. I take that multiple times a day. Uh, there's, I can't think of a day that's gone by that I haven't been nauseous in, in over a year and some change. I just can't think of one. Um, it's constantly affecting me uh, and my loss of appetite I've really uh, lost my appetite I'm not hungry at all anymore I every meal that I eat I basically have to force it down and it's just so hard to eat and I just don't want to eat anything um, a lot of times just even thinking about food will make me nauseous and um, you know like I said before I used to weigh 250 pounds before all this happened and I weigh 140 pounds now um, and I'm sure after this endoscopy, because it happens to me every single time I have one, I end up losing about 10 pounds after I have one done because I have such a hard time eating. Um, again, after just due to the pain, I just can't consume any food really. And I really live off jello and pudding and uh, protein shakes. That's about all I can get down. Um, but anyway, uh, what it's like, like I said, the loss of appetite, the nausea, uh, weight loss, um, ascites, which I've talked about. I have had ascites uh, multiple times now. Um, constant fatigue. I suffer from that every single day. I'm always tired. Uh, itchy skin. Um, yellowing in the eyes and uh, in the skin. You can actually get yellow gums and uh, your tongue can turn yellow as well, but that's called uh, jaundice. Um, and that comes from uh, the, the excess bilirubin that's in your, uh, in your body. Uh, you can get the spider-like uh, blood vessels uh, the, like um, on your skin that we've talked about. I've showed you those on my face. I've got these red spots, and they're on my nose as well, but I have those as well. Um, and then you get the varices from it, and that's due to the portal hypertension. Um, you get uh, uh, malnutrition because uh, the blood is not able to process correctly and the nutrients aren't getting to your body, so you end up malnutrition. And I've been diagnosed with malnutrition uh, a couple times. Uh, stomach pain, a lot of stomach pain. Um, gastritis is associated with, aided with it as well, and that's the emptying of the stomach and your, your stomach just doesn't empty out like it should. Um, I went for an endoscopy one time, and uh, the last time I'd eaten any solid food had been like three or four days beforehand, and I'd eaten a, a sub sandwich, and and hadn't had anything to eat in multiple days because I was I, I had pancreatitis at the time, and uh, they went in to do an endoscopy, and that food that I'd eaten uh, days prior was still in my stomach and hadn't emptied out. It was basically sitting in my stomach and fermenting. And um, I'd been burping a whole bunch, and 
uh, I could, I, I kept like, if you've ever eaten a sub sandwich and you burp and you get that, like the, the herbs and like the garlic and everything, I mean, you, you know what's coming up. I mean, you can smell it when you burp. But there was like constantly, I kept getting that all the time and I didn't, I, I didn't understand why I was still burping that up. And then come to find out after the endoscopy, the doctor was like, man, your stomach's full of food. And I, I told him I haven't eaten anything in a long time. And uh, uh, that came from uh, the cirrhosis. Um, uh, you get the portal hypertension, um, uh, the esophageal varices, uh, the encephalopathy, which is the uh, confusion that you get along with it. And that's from the excess ammonia levels in your blood. Um, uh, bruising and bleeding really easily and then you get uh, swelling in your um, in your legs and in your feet and I've, I before I knew I had cirrhosis I'd gotten pancreatitis the first time and I'd gotten out of the hospital and went back to work and um, I, I, I was I'd gone back and was working all the time and like I said I never really I haven't gone into what my business actually was um, but it was a physical labor job and I was on a job one day and um, I had pants on and I keep my socks pulled up pretty high up on my leg when I'm working. And um, I don't remember what made me do it, but I pulled my pants leg up and I think I was pulling my socks back up. And when I was doing it, I looked at my leg and around my calf, like, like right, it was like completely pushed in from the sock and then above it, the skin was like poking out like this much over the side of my leg. All that edema had settled down in there. And I had no idea what was going on and it really scared me pretty bad. It went away the next day, um, but I didn't know uh, what that was and I just kind of blew it off and then come to find out later on um, that that was due to the uh, cirrhosis. Um, uh, you get redness in the palms as well. And then uh, something else that I've talked about in one of my previous videos is your loss of sex drive. Um, you know, your loss of libido uh, is a big factor in cirrhosis as well that comes along with it. Um, the treatments for cirrhosis, uh, one of the things that they will do if you have cirrhosis because of the excess amount of ammonia in your blood, they'll put you on this medication called Zyfaxin. Uh, that's that antibiotic that I've discussed before. It's like $1,000. Um, uh, after insurance, it's not cheap. Um, they can also put you on something called lactulose, uh, which is um, it's this like thick corn syrup syrup that you have to drink, and uh, you basically drink like two or three ounces of it like twice a day or three times a day or somewhere around there. But it's disgusting, and I hope that you never have to deal with that because it is probably one of the most gross things I've ever had to ingest in my entire life. And not only does it help to get rid of the ammonia in your blood, but it also works as a laxative as well. So if you have to take the lactulose, just be prepared. I would definitely make sure that if you're on that medication that you stay somewhere close to the bathroom. And I'm not making jokes right now. I'm being dead serious because um, it will make you have to go and um, a lot and very unexpectedly when you're on that medication. They actually have given it to me before in the hospital because I was constipated. It had nothing to do with the uh, ammonia levels. They just wanted me to go to the bathroom and they had tried other methods. They had given me Miralax, they had given me uh, suppositories, they had given me multiple things and none of those worked. They finally came in the room and said, here, take this. And I was like, really? And I had to do it and uh, promise you that stuff is just gross. Um, another thing they can do is they can do of course a liver transplant. Um, uh, one thing is though with the liver transplant if you're dealing with um, alcoholic induced cirrhosis depending on your state and each state varies by state. Um, I think South Carolina you have to be sober for at least one year and um, before they'll even put you on the list uh, for a liver transplant. I don't, I'm not sure in each state, but they do vary by state. Some states will allow you to actually have a liver transplant without having to wait any period of time, but some states do require you to have to wait uh, anywhere from six months to a year, and I think some are even two years before they'll allow you to even get added to that list. Um, Another thing they can do for cirrhosis is, like I've said before, is a TIPS procedure. Back to the portal hypertension, 
Um, that's the reason why they put you, why they do the test procedure is because of the portal hypertension. Um, you get, the blood isn't flowing correctly, which causes a backup. And then that, all that blood that's basically, is getting forced backwards and then causing <clears throat> portal hypertension, esophageal varices, and it just creates a host of problems. Um, and one thing that they will do if you end up with the uh, hypoportal tension is they're most likely going to put you on some sort of a blood pressure medication. They put me on a beta blocker that I take just for because I, I don't have problems with my blood pressure in general. My blood pressure is actually really low. It's actually been to the point where it's been so low that it really worried them a whole lot. And I've had them had to do a pick line in my chest to bring my blood pressure back up um, because my blood pressure was so low. Um, but the, the beta blocker that I take, it helps, uh, keep my, um, the pressure uh, in the, uh, portal vein down, um, because what can end up happening as well with that hot, that portal hypertension can lead to excess pressure on those veins and then those veins can burst and then you can end up with internal bleeding, which I've had before. And, um, uh, I've had them in other areas, but I've had them in my esophagus. And uh, that, is, that is not a fun experience when you're uh, vomiting blood like that. And it can be very, very scary. Not just for you, but for the other people that are around you. And, you know, when you see somebody and they throw up and there's blood, I mean, that's, that's really frightening. And you know there's something really, really wrong when that happens. Um, but uh, another thing that they can do, well, but, but back to the test procedure. The test procedure basically is what they're doing is they're putting stents into that portal vein and increasing that blood flow and I think that what they do as well is they divert the blood and uh, they divert some of it from going straight into the liver and they divert it right back to the heart so there's not so much blood trying to run through the liver because the scarring is already there and there's nothing they can do about that um, so that, that the blood just can't flow through there I guess you would like uh, compare it to like a clogged up drain um, you, you only but so much water can go down that drain if there's a bunch of hair in the bottom of it but it you know the drain on the back end of the uh of your sink you have that overflow drain that's kind of like what the test procedure is doing it's allowing that blood to pass through instead of overflowing and you end up with like a burst varices or something like that um uh Making sure that you're on a proper diet is uh, another treatment for cirrhosis. Uh, eating plenty of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, um, you want to keep your sodium levels down at least uh, 1,000 milligrams or less every single day. That's going to help prevent the ascites from getting bad. Um, it's going to keep you from retaining a lot of water. That's going to help with the edema as well. Um, and just getting good uh, fruits and vegetables in, you're going to increase your fiber intake. It's going to help move things along in there. And um, I would definitely suggest, too, that if you are going to eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, especially ones that, um, you know, that you're not peeling, that are kind of like ready to eat fruits and vegetables, I would definitely buy organic when you're doing that. Uh, because a lot of vegetables are sprayed with pesticides. Um, a lot of these GMO plants that they're growing these days, uh, they grow the plants in order to be able to live through being sprayed with pesticides. So they'll directly spray those pesticides right onto the vegetables and um, the plant, the, the vegetables will live. It'll kill everything else around it, but the vegetable lives and then all that uh, herbicide is still on the outside of the vegetable, absorbs into the, the fruit or the vegetable and you're eating uh, those herbicides and those are not good for your liver by any means at all. So um, I would definitely suggest buying organic. Um, some things you can get away with because you know you're peeling them, um, you know it's got a hard skin on the outside. Something like butternut squash or something like that, I wouldn't imagine it would be a huge problem anyway because it's got such a hard skin on it and you're peeling that off anyway. But if you're eating something like an apple, or a peach or something like that that you're going to eat the skin and all definitely look into getting organic on that um you're going to want to make sure that the, another thing that what they've told me in the past is that i need to make sure that i'm consuming enough protein um to keep the uh, water from uh, leaching into the gut 
uh, losing weight can help uh, control the cirrhosis. And a lot of these things are not going to cure cirrhosis. There's no cure for cirrhosis at all. Once the scarring has got that bad, there's no turning back. I mean, it is what it is. Now, they can stop the cirrhosis from getting any worse, and they can stop the scarring from happening, um, but there's no reversal of it. Um, and, you know, that, that, that's pretty much it. You, you know, they, they, they can keep it from going any further, um, um, which can pro prolong your life, but you definitely don't want to get in any worse than what you already have. Um, uh, losing weight helps improve that. Um, cirrhosis is the most common reason for liver transplant. Uh, they can also give you diuretics and um, you know those help to uh, to get the fluid off of your belly which you're going to end up with if you if you have a, a cirrhosis you will get ascites um, and the diuretics will help pull that fluid off help get rid of that edema. Uh, they can tap your stomach, like I talked about in a previous video about ascites, to pull that fluid off of you. Um, they're going to want to make sure that you're taking uh, your vitamins and minerals. You know, they might want to prescribe you like a vitamin supplement or something like that. I know I've had my blood work done before and I was low on all kinds of stuff. Vitamin D is insufficient. Vitamin B insufficient. So there are a lot of things they had to go in there and give me supplements for because I had insufficient numbers on a lot of my vitamins. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it as far as my list. So, I mean, that pretty much covers, um, you know, the reasons you get uh, cirrhosis, um, uh, you know, what, what it's like, and then, um, you know, what, what, what they can do uh, to, to treat it. Um, the one thing I will tell you is, um, you know, <clears throat> talk, talk with your doctor because you, your life's not over with cirrhosis. I mean, it's really not. Um, you can continue to live. Um, now, I'm not going to say that your life's going to be the greatest in the world. It's not going to be, you know, you're not going to be 18 years old again. Um, you know, you are going to deal with some symptoms and repercussions of having it. You're going to be tired. And I mean, not all these things, just because you have cirrhosis, you're going to have every single one of those symptoms. I mean, you might have a few of them, you might have one of them, um, or you might have all of them. But it doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to have every single one of those symptoms. Um, I don't have every single one of those symptoms. Um, I have a lot of those symptoms, but not all of them. Um, but there, like I said, talk to your doctor because uh, <clears throat> you know there more there are more options than what I just discussed right there, and there is a lot of research going into uh, um, some drugs right now <clears throat> that they're trying to develop to actually reverse cirrhosis. They're in they're in the works right now, actually happening. Um, I think at the Mayo Clinic is actually where they're really working hard on that right now. So get online and do some research. There is a lot of stuff out there that they're. Uh, that they're working on and you know who knows what they might be able to do in the future so like i said it's not the end of the world and you can continue to live i mean <clears throat> it's 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 not it's not an an end all be all i mean <clears throat> it's something you're gonna have to deal with but you can go on with your life and uh continue to have a good time and um you know be with your family and all that kind of stuff now are, are you going to have the energy to go out and, you know, uh, cut down a bunch of trees or something like that? No, you're not. But, I mean, like I said the other day, I mean, there's tons of things that you can find to do to occupy your time just because you have cirrhosis and you're tired all the time. You can still stay busy and you don't have to just lay in the bed all day long. It's just you don't have to. Um, there are a couple of organs that are affected by cirrhosis. Um, your spleen definitely uh, gets affected um, from cirrhosis. Uh, your stomach uh, gets affected from cirrhosis. I have a lot of stomach issues because of that. I just talked about it um, because I've had problems with what ends up happening is with the portal hypertension. They, they, I think they've pretty much addressed it. My portal hypertension is still there. Uh, it takes time for all this stuff to kind of work its way out. I mean, it's not going to iron itself out in a day. It takes time. Um, but what ends up happening is that every time I eat, when the blood flows into my stomach <clears throat> and fills my stomach up. And then 
after I've eaten, all that blood's there. And usually on a normal person's stomach, that blood just gets to escape and go back to where it goes. The blood stays in my stomach, which causes me to have really bad stomach aches. And um, uh, your lungs can be affected from cirrhosis. Uh, your brain and your kidneys can be affected from cirrhosis as well. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong, uh, you know, just because of cirrhosis can cause a lot of other issues as well. So going back to what I said, you know, the most important thing that I can suggest for you guys, like I said, I never did it myself, but I promise you, go get a yearly physical done because they might be able to find something, uh, you know, and catch it before it becomes a serious problem. You know, they might find that you have a uh, fatty liver and they can reverse that. They're, they can reverse fatty liver, but once it gets past fatty liver and the cirrhosis, there's no going back. Once that scarring's done, it's there. So maybe you go to the doctor, have your blood work done. They find out you have fatty liver disease. Um, they address it. They know what's going on. They tell you to stop drinking. You quit. You change your diet. That can all be reversed, and you won't end up in my shoes. And that's the whole reason I make these videos, is to try to help you guys and prevent you to have to go through what I'm going through because it's just, it's, it's not fun. And I didn't know. I had no idea that that alcohol could cause these kinds of issues for somebody as young as I am. I never thought it was possible. I thought, like I said before, I thought that was something that old homeless people got, but th that's not the case. It doesn't matter. Uh, cirrhosis affects every single race, every single gender, you know, every single age, every single uh, person, no matter what their financial situation is, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, 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 it affects everyone. It has nothing to do with anything else. But <clears throat> anyways, guys, I'm going to stop rambling on. Um, I, I have my surgery tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Um, I am going to film tomorrow. I doubt that video will be up until later on in the evening tomorrow. I am going to take, I'm going to have to piece all this stuff together. So I will have to do a little bit of editing, but I am going to film a video before the procedure. I'm going to film a video after the procedure and then I'm going to film a little video later on and then I'm going to piece all that together and then I'm going to make one video for tomorrow. Uh, be on the lookout for that. It's probably going to be up somewhere around like five, six, seven. So it just depends on how my day works out. And I really can't give you a, 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 a time because um, I just don't know how the day is going to play out. You know, you think you're going to go in there and it's going to be seven o'clock. You're going to have your procedure and then you're done in 20 minutes or whatever. It never works out like that. You go in at seven, you're, you're set for surgery at 730. And the next thing you know, it's 1130 and you're having your surgery. So... <clears throat> anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video thank you for watching the video I did earlier I appreciate everybody so much giving me all the prayers all the great wishes the you know the best of lucks and all that stuff you guys are so awesome um, I can't tell you how much it means to me that all of you guys are reaching out I was just sitting there just scrolling through my phone on the way down here and just looking at all the prayers and it I'm t it's just blowing me away and I know that tomorrow I'm in safe hands because I've got so many people praying for me, and um, I, I know it's going to be okay. But look for the video tomorrow, guys. It will be up, and um, I love you all, and I'll see you <clears throat> on the other side of the surgery. So love you. Bye-bye.